slide, we want to discuss surface charge, charge distributed over a surface. For instance, imagine you have some kind of surface, and it doesn't have to be in, in a plane, it could be in any three-dimension surface, and uh, we can define the charge per unit area, sigma, to be dq by dA, which means that dq is sigma dA in a small element, for a small element of area. And the meaning of uh, sigma, we can also imagine it for a uniform charge distribution. Uh, the, the distance between the charges is everywhere the same. So this distribution is a uniform charge distribution. So imagine you want to get sigma at point one, sigma one, and sigma here at point two, sigma two, and you want to compare them. Well, the procedure to get sigma at any point, you make an element of area like this one, you see how much charge there is inside this area, delta Q. You divide delta Q by the area, but then you shrink the size of the area until it becomes a point. And in that limit, that will give you the sigma at that particular point. So clearly, because the charge distribution is uniform here, any area that you make over here will have the same amount of charge as any the same area over here. So when you calculate sigma at this point, and at this point, you'll get the same value. So what does a non-uniform charge distribution look like? This is, just a, this is just one example. You see here the charges are closer to each other on the left side, and as you go to the right, they get farther apart. So clearly, if you evaluate sigma at point one over here, and you evaluate sigma at point over two over here, you'll get a different value. Because when you take an element of area here, and you take the same element of area here, there's more charge in this element of area than there is in this one. So when you calculate sigma at this point, it will be bigger than the value of sigma at this point. So sigma in general, it doesn't have to be the same value at different points in space. It could be different. Okay, what if you want to get the total charge on this surface? So uh, one way you could do it is you cut up the, the surface into finite, uh, a finite number of elements of area, and we can say that the charge in each element of area is approximately sigma of that element of area times the area. Why, does, why is this approximate? Because the sigma, as long as you have a finite element of area of a finite size, the sigma could change even within this element of area from point to point. So which value of sigma should we use? We could use, for instance, the value of sigma at the center, but that would still be an approximation because sigma is changing at other points. So we could make an approximate formula for the charge to be you sum over all the elements. You get delta Q here, you get delta Q here, you add delta Q here and delta Q here, all these. You add every for every single element of area, the charge per unit area times the area. We can use the value of sigma at the center of the element of area, but again, this is just an approximation. How would this approximation get better and better? Well, we need to make the number of elements of area go to infinity, so or the size of each element of area to go to zero. In that case, when you're doing this summation, you will be using the value of sigma, the correct value of sigma at every single point in space. And we know that the limit of sums can be written as an integral. So you can write Q as integration of sigma dA. This is the general formula for getting the charge in a certain, on a certain surface. And you have to you put this as a definite integral with proper limits. Now, if it happens that sigma is a constant, then you can take sigma outside of the integration. And in that case, you get sigma integration of dA. Integration of dA is just the total area. So you can write down the total charge as sigma times the area. But remember, this is only the case if sigma is a constant. If sigma is not a constant, you have to keep it inside the integration.